So we are starting our first unit um, called Algebraic Skills, and this is lesson one, operations with polynomials. So often it's more efficient to simplify expressions before working with them. Just as we add, subtract, multiply, and divide numbers, we can also perform these operations with polynomial expressions. This first uh, lesson is just a review. So you're gonna see some things that you uh, learned in grade nine math and a couple of things you learned in grade 10. So the first one is just um, a review of collecting like terms. So when we look at the terms in this expression, um, and it's an expression because it's not, it doesn't have an equal sign in it and terms on the left side and the right side, that would be an equation. This is just an expression. I see two terms that are alike here, the 5x and the 2x, so I could add those. Um, we often also write in descending order of x. So I would pro probably put my x squared term first and then the 7x. So remember that an x term is not the same as an x squared term. They are not alike. So all we learned there, all we did there was collect like terms. The next one, uh, we have two like terms, 6y to the fourth minus 8y to the fourth. Remember, you keep the same variable part and we just subtract our coefficients. So we get negative 2y to the fourth. This one, we're going to multiply. So when I see brackets here, I know I need to multiply. I would multiply all my numbers together. Negative 3 times 5 times negative 2. I have two negatives, so it's going to become positive. And I get 30. Um, I'm looking for variables now. I have an x. And I don't have any other terms with an x, but then I have z squared times z to the third. So do you remember that we keep the same base and we add the exponents when we multiply? So we would have z to the fifth. This one here, we divide the numbers. So this is division. 16 divided by 2 is 8. But then we see x to the third. When we divide um, powers that have the same base, we subtract the exponents. So there's a three here. You have to remember there's a little imaginary one. So three minus one is two. So we have eight X squared. And then I guess you would see four minus five. You would probably think that's Y to the negative one. When we have a negative exponent, we'll learn more about that in a later unit, but the negative exponent, I need that to go to the denominator. It means the reciprocal of that. So one over Y. So we would have 8x squared divided by y, and that would be a nice way to leave your answer, um, just because we like to have positive exponents when we're done. So here we multiply and add exponents, and here we divide and we subtract exponents. Example two, um, you probably remember the distributive property I have no terms inside the brackets that are alike, so I can't simplify what's inside the brackets. So my next step then would be to multiply all of those terms by six and all of these terms by four. So I would have 30x squared plus 24x minus 18. And then my second group, I would end up four times negative two, so negative eight x squared. Uh, plus 12x, plus 4 times 9 is 36. And then I would just want to collect any like terms that I have. I have an x squared term and minus another 8x squared. So I'd have 22x squared. I have a 24x and a 12x, so I would have 36x. And then negative 18 plus 36, I would end up with positive 18. And it's done because none of those terms are alike. I can't go any further. When you see brackets inside brackets, normally we would start inside. Uh, if I had any like terms there, I would add them together, but I don't. This is a little tricky. There's a minus sign here. Remember that minus sign is like multiplying by negative one. So I would probably just do this one step at a time. Uh, I would probably write this out as negative 21x plus 4y as my first step and multiply by the negative one first. Then I see that I've got three X squared and now I'm going to have to multiply all of these terms by negative one. 
So I have negative 3y squared and then plus 21x and then minus 4y. And then that's all you can do because none of those terms are alike and I can't add any of them together. So on the second page, more of the same. Uh, this moves into grade 10 math, still the distributive property. Do you remember FOIL when we, it's an acronym for uh, distributing two binomials. We're gonna multiply, so five times X, that's our first, and then five times negative six, that's our outside. Three times X is our inside, and then three times negative six is our last. It doesn't have to be done in that order. That just kind of helps you have a checklist to make sure um, that you don't miss one of the terms. So I do five times X, so five X squared, minus 30x and then the inside so plus 3x and then minus 18 and combine my two middle terms together to get negative 27x and then minus 18 as my final answer. This down here I, it's just kind of things to, to point out. Remember to really look there's a plus sign there that is not multiplied I know the four is here and it's tempting to start with that multiplication first. I would probably just try and stick to doing brackets first and follow the orders of bed mass. So first, outside, inside, last, I would probably ignore everything else for now. My two X plus five, I probably wouldn't even touch it or the four, but I would do um, use the distributive property on my brackets here. So I would have six X squared plus 15x, minus 6x, minus 15. I would, um, I'm kind of showing all my steps here so I don't confuse anybody. I would probably combine my middle terms here first. So 15 minus six, we have nine x. And then the minus 15. Now I feel like I'm ready to probably start dropping some of the brackets here, two x plus five. I'd have to multiply all of these terms by four. So I would get 24x squared plus 36x minus 60. And then I look down and I do see some like terms there. So 24x squared, uh, but then I see I have a 2x and a 36x. So I'd have 38x and then five minus 60, so I'd end up with negative 55. And then that's my final answer. Example three, um, we, we could see questions like this. This is really not a big deal. When I see a binomial out front, think about what we were doing up above. I would multiply the first term by X and then the second term by X and then the third term by X. And then I'd move on to the negative three times X and then negative three times two Y and then negative three times negative five. So it's going to be a few uh, terms I have to write out here. So I've got X squared and then two X Y or Y X, it wouldn't matter. And then minus five X. So I'm done multiplying by X. Now I'm going to multiply by negative three. So negative three X minus six Y plus 15. And then I'm looking down to see if I have any terms that are alike. It looks like uh, I do have my negative 5x and my negative 3x are alike. So I could simplify as much as possible. Uh, x squared plus 2xy minus 8x, whoops, minus 6y plus 15 would be my final answer. Uh, special products, you might remember. Um, it's just, we're talking about a shortcut here. So if I see two brackets that are actually identical, two binomials that are the same, normally you could think about writing them out uh, because what this means is that x plus y squared just means that there's two brackets that are both x plus y. When I multiply them out the long way, I would do my first times first, and then my outside would be xy, and my inside would be xy, and my last would be y squared. What's interesting about this though, is that these two terms are always the same. So there's two of them. And so there's a shortcut that we can take. We can square the first term. Um, so I wouldn't have to write it out the long way here. 
Square the first term, multiply these together, and then double it times 2, 2xy, and then square the last term. So that can that's true as well. If I had x minus y squared, I would square the first term, multiply these two terms together, and double it. So I'd have negative 2xy, and then square the last term. So it wouldn't matter if you have an x plus y or an x minus y. The other rule of special products that you might have learned in grade 10 is that when I have brackets that are the same, except one sign is positive and one sign is negative, what would happen if I did that out the long way, x plus y times x minus y, um, I get x squared, and then I would have negative xy as my outside, whoops, and then positive xy as my inside and then um, minus y squared as my last. These two terms always cancel out. So if I notice that my brackets are the same but the signs are opposite, I can just do first times first and last times last and skip the outside and the inside in the middle because they're gonna cancel out anyway. So let's practice that. Uh, when I do, when I look at this bracket, I would have three x plus five times three x plus five some students still like to write it out and do it the long way, but if we practiced our little shortcut, I'm going to square the first term, so I get 9x squared. I would think about multiplying these together, that's 15x, but I'd have to double it because there'd be two of those. So I'd have 30x, and then the last times the last is 25. So it's much faster, I don't have to write the brackets out twice, I don't have to do first outside inside last, I'm able just to go to my answer. When I see this one, uh, I notice my brackets are the same, but otherwise uh, I do have different signs. I'm only going to do the first and the last. So I have 4x squared minus 25, which is called a difference of squares, you might remember. So this is just a little quick review of some skills that you hopefully already have, but it is still good um, just to go back again and practice. You make less mistakes, you go a little bit faster, uh, the more practice that you have.